everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In the past week since my previous video, there have been some massive news stories that have come out regarding the Wheel of Time television show adaptation, and this is some really big stuff. I apologize to all of you about the delay in getting this out to you, uh, but this past week I've been like crazy sick and like didn't even have a voice up until today to be able to record this. But what it did give me some time to do was to do some more research and get you guys a little deeper perspective on some of the news. So as I announced in my last video, I have a new sponsor for the channel and it's a service that I have personally used for years. Since announcing this last week, a bunch of you took advantage of the free trial and signed up. Uh, of course, the sponsor here is Skillshare. Basically, Skillshare is a place where you can learn from professionals in many different fields. Uh, you can learn cooking, skilled trades, computer skills, critical analysis, carpentry, or even how to start your own YouTube channel. They are giving my viewers two months for free to check out the service with zero commitment. Well, all you got to do is check it out. Click the link down in the description below and sign up. It's super easy, and I guarantee you that you will find something there to learn. I love browsing around and finding things to just learn about, and I invite you to do the same thing. And it really helps this channel and is a great way to support us without spending any money. Let's hit the spoiler warning for the video as well. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red with spoilers through Eye of the World only. So if you haven't finished the first book, stop watching this video and go start reading the first book so you can come back and watch it. Duh! So although the cast announcements from last Wednesday from Amazon are the main news, and we're certainly going to cover that today, right before that though, I want to hit on a couple other big news drops that came right before that. And some of these are pretty big in my opinion. So let's start with the first of these announcements, and that is Kirsten Chalmers has been announced as the makeup and hair director for the show. This is a fairly big hire for a show like Wheel of Time, which will have distinctive hair and makeup for the various cultures, and it's really going to be central if they're trying to adapt the Aes Sedai Ageless look. This is really going to be done with makeup effects if they do it, it won't be CGI, and she's going to be the person in charge of that. Kirsten is very well known and highly regarded as a makeup director and has quite a resume. Some of her previous projects have included the Catherine the Great TV show, which was just released, The Legend of Tarzan, Black Mirror, Black Sails, The Constant Gardener, Rush, Life of Pi, and John Carter. In taking a look at some of her work, what I'm most impressed by is her work on Catherine the Great and The Legend of Tarzan. As both of these required extensive hair and makeup work to create, and the types of hairstyles that we see in a Renaissance era show like Catherine the Great are the types that I would expect to see on the nobles in the Wheel of Time. I know this seems like a minor addition to the show, but it's the people like this that make these shows amazing when they pull them off. I'm really excited to see Kirsten's work here on the Wheel of Time. Another piece of news that dropped recently is the addition of yet another episode director for the show. Wayne Yip has been added to the team, joining Uta Bresowitz and Sally Richardson Whitfield as directors for the series. Wayne has the Wheel of Time added to his CV in an undisclosed role, but he's a director, and so it's a pretty good assumption that he's going to be tapped to direct a few episodes of the show. I think the director choices are often very important as they direct how the shows will be set and filmed and they essentially partner in crafting the visual direction for the show. So if Wayne Yip is directing for the Wheel of Time, who is he and what does he have to his credit? Wayne has primarily been a television director throughout his career, but he has an extensive list of credits as a director on the small screen. He is most known for his work as a director for multiple seasons of the famous British TV show Doctor Who, including being tapped to direct a New Year's Day special in 2018. He's also known for his work on End to the Badlands, a very fun show that I've talked about in previous videos that I like, the AMC action drama Preacher, Hunters on Amazon Prime with Al Pacino, and the new action drama Treadstone on USA and Amazon Prime. He tends to direct action style dramas, and based on the work that I've seen from him, I think that he's going to do a great job with The Wheel of Time. And the final piece of news that we get before the casting announcements is probably, of all of these, including the casting announcements, the one that I'm the most excited for. And that's the announcement of David Buckley to compose the score for the show. I have mentioned in previous videos and live streams that when the composer is announced that it would tell us a lot about the direction of the show, which is why I have been patiently waiting to find out who they would grab for this spot. If you aren't convinced that this is an important role, think about Game of Thrones or Star Wars or Harry Potter. The themes or the scores to those movies and television shows are instantly recognizable and you associate the movie or television show with the sound. Can you imagine Star Wars without the main theme or the Imperial March? So whoever they get for this has to be good. So what do I think of David Buckley? Well, 
I think this is a very big pickup for the show, and he's a really, really good composer. In fact, he's Emmy nominated and has won BMI Film Awards for his score of The Good Wife. And that specifically was for the title sequence, which is the part that I think we're going to need to hear the most here in The Wheel of Time. I have some of his works linked in the description below, but he's really good. And as someone that follows musical scores, I think this is a great hire. It isn't one that will be celebrated by most people, but I'm a big fan. He has an interesting style and a very adaptable to the type of work that he's doing. Definitely listen to some of the works that I've linked below and let me know what you think. So let's hit on the major casting announcements now. As many of you probably already know, last week Amazon released released four more major casting choices for roles that many in the fan base were waiting to hear about. Hamed Animashan has been cast in the role of Loyal. Alexandra Willem has been cast in the role of Tom Marilyn. Johan Myers has been cast as Padon Fain. And Alvaro Morte has been cast in the likely to be expanded role of Logan Ablar. For each of these choices, I've actually watched all of their work and have a good feel for their style and capabilities as actors. I want to break down these picks for you and give you guys a feel of what you should expect and whether I believe that these are good choices or not. Let's start first with Hamed Animashan in the casting of Loyal. Hamed is a British actor that doesn't have a ton of film series or large roles to his name. Having been in Black Mirror for a small role, most of his acting career has been on the stage and he has made some digital shorts which I'll have linked down below. He's the one of these actors that we have the least to go on. But here's what I can tell you. He's very large, he's 6'3 and a big guy, and I'm sure he'll be larger with perspective, prosthetics, or perhaps even CGI, but his voice is deep, and I think he can portray a gentle giant well. At least I can certainly see him pulling off the part. Rafe had the following to say about Hummet. Loyal's always been a character I was excited slash terrified about, because of how perfect the actor has to be to pull off what's required. Hamed is so good that when his first audition came through, Every single producer on the show emailed back within five minutes that he was the one. I certainly think it's interesting that Rafe believes that Loyal required a perfect actor in his words. Obviously, Hamed's ability aside, playing the character of Loyal requires being endearing to the audience, mainly. Loyal is sincere, kind, intelligent, and almost naive, despite being older than any of the other main characters that we meet. As I've said, this is one of the actors that we don't have a ton of work here to judge him by. But the reviews I've read of his performances in Midsummer Night's Dream and what I've seen of him on the small roles that we do have leads me to believe that he will do loyal justice. The other thing worth pointing out here is that this obviously does confirm that the Ogier will be a part of the story. There has been some speculation, including some from me, that the Ogier could be cut from the story as they aren't super necessary to the greater arc of the Wheel of Time. But it appears that the Ogier will be a part of the story and that Loyal will be on the screen. So there have been a ton of speculation among some of the more anxious members of the Wheel of Time fan base that Tom Marilyn had been cut from the show given that we didn't get a casting announcement for him for quite a while. Obviously with the announcement of Alexandra Willem as Tom Marilyn, this can be put to bed. A couple videos back, we speculated as to who Alexandra Willem could be playing, and I thought that he might be playing the role of Jarrett Byer. Well, it looks like I was very, very wrong. If you want to see more of Willem's backstory, you can watch my other video about his role, but he is most known for his roles in The Last Kingdom and Tomb Raider. So while I think that Alexandra is a good actor, I was a bit surprised with his character being announced as Tom, as this just isn't the typical type of character that he plays. He is known for his tougher and grittier bad guy types of characters, but the more thought that I give it, Tom really has a darker side to him, and whoever plays him would need the ability to show that darker side as well as the jovial side. I think Alexandra can do this. The other thing I was surprised to find is that Alexandra can sing and do it quite well. He has done some musicals before, including the Danish dubbed version of the animated movie Tangled. I will admit to being unsure about him before I did any research, but I do believe that this he will do this role justice, and I think that he has the right stature to play someone who is as dangerous as Tom, while also being a gleeman, being jovial and happy and entertaining. I'm really excited to see his portrayal of Tom. Rafe had this to say about Alexandra. Ye of little faith. Sometimes it takes a minute to find someone who's absolutely perfect to play a character as important as Tom. I was actually in an old inn with him this afternoon to witness a gleeman performance. And let me tell you, he is something special. Now this is a bit of tongue in cheek as Rafe recognizes that fans were impatient about not getting a Tom Marilyn casting sooner. I believe that he is also implying here that they filmed a scene of Tom performing, which that could be Berlon. And based on the fact that I've seen Alexandra sing now, I think 
that he could be pretty impressive as a Gleeman. So I'm really excited to see Tom on the screen. It also appears that Johan Myers being cast as Pot on Fane has come to a surprise to many, despite there being a few that predicted it. You can see him in the original table read video that Amazon released a couple months back. There was quite a bit of speculation as to who he might be playing. Now, I was not that familiar with Johan prior to doing some research on his roles and characters that he's played, so I didn't really have an opinion as to how he would do in the role. The primary quality that I've always wanted with anyone who would play Pot on Fane is that they must be able to play crazy well and also be sly and manipulative. Basically, it was all about the eyes to me. That's where crazy is typically found as actors, and I'm going to tell you, of these choices, here is the one where I am the most pleasantly surprised after watching some of his work. There's a clip I posted below that I believe shows you what I'm talking about. Johan has the dangerous crazy look down. Uh, this man can give you the creeps and he's also a really smooth talker. I am very, very excited to see him play Pot on Fane and based on what I've seen, He's going to be incredible in this role. Like I said, I was the most surprised with this one. Rafe had this to say about Johan. Johan! He was actually the very first shot of the show, riding his cart into the two rivers. And the way he stepped off that cart and took the town in will make you smile and shiver simultaneously in the way that only Pot on Fane can. Now, I think this speaks to the vibe that Johan is able to give off as Fane, and I'm super excited for this casting as well. Uh, the other thing to note here uh, that I know someone have speculated based on Rafe's comments, this does not mean that this was the opening shot of the show. This is the one, the first shot that they filmed. So that does not mean that it will be the show's going to open with Pot on Fane rolling into the two rivers. Now, Johan Myers is most known for his roles in the TV series Snatch, the movie Black Hawk Down, and the movie The Bank Job. The last casting is the one that I think is overall the most impactful casting, and that is Alvaro Morte in the role of Loghain Ablar. We already knew that they would be expanding the role of Loghain, so it was natural that they would want to get someone who could carry that role, and man, did they nail this. For most Americans, you may not know much about Alvaro Morte, but he is an extremely famous Spanish actor who stars in one of the most popular shows on Netflix, Money Heist. He plays the professor, and I think this casting is an absolute win and spot on. Please check out some of the clips below to see what he's done. But this is an international star power in, in a guy with serious dramatic acting chops. Rafe had this to say about Alvaro. I am in love with Alvaro Morte. I cried real human tears in my office when I watched his performance in his first scene. He is going to break you. Now, I love what this implies. First of all, it implies that Logan's role will be emotional and that the loss that he has with the loss of his ability at a channel will be emotional and powerful, and that's what I want. I want it to hit us hard. Alvaro is a really great actor to be able to pull this off as well. Just listen to his voice. He can command with the sound of his voice, yet he can also carry emotion with his facial features. Uh, this is an absolutely wonderful hire. So my impressions of the hires as a whole, I think they nailed it with these ones. All of these are minor characters that have large roles, and they seem to have gone to either highly skilled or highly trained actors rather than models, which is a sign in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. I always hate it when I see them cast people that look good over the substance of their acting, and I feel like here, they have really gone after high substance actors. My other main takeaway from these hires is that we are still yet to see the major departures from the books, that we know will be coming. All of the characters fit the narrative and what we know about their screen time and the size of their roles seems consistent with the books, with the exception of the expanded role for Loghain, which we all expected as Rafe essentially said that Loghain would have an expanded role earlier. Even the Ogier are part of the story. There are a number of questions these hires raise, but given the length of this video already, I'm going to save that for another video that it should drop this week, assuming I stay healthy. <laughs> but what do you think of all these hires? Please let me know in the comments below like the video, and subscribe to the channel to get more Wheel of Time television show updates, as well as other Wheel of Time related content. Please check out the merch down below to get your Nablus merch just in time for the holidays. And you can support the channel with our sponsors, audible.com and Skillshare, where you can get free stuff and help the channel at the same time. Of course, the best way that you can support the channel is on my Patreon, if you want to check out that link also in the description below. There are a whole lot of really cool tier rewards there where you can kind of get some behind the scenes content, even be a part of my council that kind of helps me put together the direction. Uh, we'll be having a meeting here for that in the next coming week. But again, thank you all to, to all of you who already support uh, the channel and already support me on Patreon. Uh, we're really trying to build a bigger Wheel of Time community and you guys are all a part of doing that. So thank you very much. And thank you all for watching the video. Again, check out all the million links that I've got down below. But thank you for watching, and until next time, peace out.
tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do My mistress up above slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase her fancy oh so free Crying tinker oh dear tinker won't you mend a pot for me 